right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Hot Pudge IG Live. My name is Pudge Fernandez. I am your host today. Sweating, sweating. Uh, I don't have any air conditioning uh, in this particular room where my studio is. Uh, yeah, I know it sucks. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Uh, hopefully uh, one day in the near future, I'll be in a real studio, not my basement apartment with no air conditioning. But you know how it is. That's life. Got to do what you got to do to make it. And this is only the beginning. So if I got to fucking sweat, I got to sweat. Hey, thank you for joining. Uh, we got a great guest on today. Uh, a comedian, an actor, and an Army veteran. Uh, I was going over my list of people that I wanted to put on. And went, and I noticed, oh, oh, I forgot, but we have a lot of entertainers, a lot of comedians especially, that served in the U.S. military. So over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be putting them on. Uh, so far, I got the uh, Army, Navy, Marines. I'm waiting on the Air Force. Uh, go figure. They're probably laid back somewhere. But yeah, somewhere. they're all comedians, actors. Uh, they've done commercials. They've, they've been seen on TV and movies. So I will be getting them on. Uh, tonight, I have my first one uh, who was in the Army and was actually stationed in the same base I was. Uh, I don't think at the same time was with the first cavalry division so very excited to speak be speaking to him tonight let, let, ask him about his experience uh share my experience see if it was the same uh i think he's having some technical difficulties uh i mean i thought everybody i mean i don't feel bad uh because i didn't know shit about technology there he is uh but yeah apparently it's 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 not everybody knows, so I feel better. I thought I was the only dumb, stupid, uh, old motherfucker that didn't know nothing about technology, but apparently a lot of people don't too, so I feel better. I'm not that dumb. So let's get our first guest on. All right, let's see if he's there. Yes, he is there. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, uh, and he's a Queens guy. He's, I forgot to say, he is a Queens guy. So he's a veteran, he's a comedian, he's acting, he's from Queens. Isn't that right, Mr. PJ Landers? What's up, buddy? Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, man. Let's hope Where the delay. Huh? Let's hope the delay doesn't kill us. No, not at all. Not at all. Were you having diff uh, tic uh, technical difficulty? Is this your first no, one? No, not at all. Oh, okay. first time with you, or first time like on the internet? <laughs> IG, I, IG live. Uh, no, I've been. I've I've done a couple of them. There, I, I just uh, wasn't completely sure if you wanted me on exactly at the time that you said, which you did, which was oh. six o'clock. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. All right. Just checking. Because when, I when also, this started, right? I also like to uh, hear people talk to about me uh, on live when they don't know I'm listening. So that's great. Nothing but good things. Nothing but good things. All positive. All positive. I mean, I let everyone know, especially the fact that you're a veteran. Uh, very cool. Uh, I've been focusing. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of interviews this month on, uh, with veterans. There's a lot of comedians. Uh, I guess you're the first one, Army. And you were stationed in Fort Hood, Texas. Am I right? I think I'm losing your signal. Uh, your, your, your signal's spinning. Your picture is frozen at the moment. If you can hear me, uh, just waiting on a better signal, I guess. I actually, I don't know, might be around here. I don't know if it's you or me, but it happens. If you if you can maybe log off and, and jump back on, I, that's, that's what usually happens. It's it happens from time to time. So Wi-Fi isn't perfect. It's pro oh, ooh, I heard I'm hearing something, but it's not coming through clearly. You might want to jump off and just jump back on. Oh, there, wait, is that it? Oh, mm. is it? It's a little, it's a little grainy. I'm a little grainy. How do you know it's not me? I've been inside for a while. Oh, there you go. Days. Is that working? Okay. The picture, I can hear you. So that's all you need. Who needs to look at me for the whole day? All right. As long as I can hear you. Your, your, your picture. Uh, yeah. Your picture, it, it's almost like it's, uh, it's a two-second delay. But I see you with the shades on. You're moving. You're just kind of robotic. I got to love technology. I can't wait till this shit is over and we can, like, I can do a real live face-to-face, -face, you know, like a podcast or something. I'm just going to drive one block and see if it makes a difference. I'm on a weird block, but if you can still hear me, that's good. Yeah. So I can't wait yeah. for this to be over either. I did an outside show last week and it was the craziest thing. You know, I've, I've done them before, <coughs> but because it was a How different outside feel? show, 
it was it was fine. You know, like I said. Fuck. Oh, I lost the sound. Am I losing you completely now? Okay, yeah. I got you back on. There you go. All right, I'll try. I'll try to get to a good spot and then pull over. Uh, I mean, right now I'm in Brooklyn, about to see my uh, oldest, uh, oldest uh, sibling, uh, my oldest kid. Okay. So uh, anyway, go ahead, man. What? Why do I? Tell me, you know, you, you, uh, how are you? Everything good? You, you, you how's this? this thing treating you how's it treating me uh adapt and overcome that's how's it how's it treating me that basically doing ig lives adapt and overcome got to keep the mind sharp not going on stage uh not only adapting but like recreating myself uh different forum now uh you can't depend on stand-up anymore you know so i think we we all got a kick in the pants you know what i'm saying yeah man yeah, it's like, you know, even if we, you know, for the military people that are listening, you know, you finally got a good post and uh, you got a good shift and everything is good and you you got weekends off and all of a sudden they ship you off to fucking Alaska. Yeah, just like that. You get orders. Now, what years were you in? How I was that? you in Fort Hood too, right? First calf. Yeah, I was in in the, the late, uh, late 80s into 90s for a little bit. How is that reception? Is that good? Yeah, that's pretty good. Right there. All right. I'm going to try to stop here for a moment. All right. What years All were right, you in? What time, when did you get out? Yeah, so I, uh, I originally went in uh, 87 through uh, 90. Okay. And uh, I was at uh, Fort Hood. I did uh, – it was pretty cool. Whoa, man. It was pretty cool uh, originally. Like, up front, everything was great. Like, I – I mean, I, honestly, what happened was I had seen a bunch of movies and maybe I kind of sort of thought I was going to be prepared for all of it, you yeah. know, and I, 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 I originally was at uh, Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Oh, OK. How many years so did you I go? Went, um, I did like the strange thing about it is I did a, a year and a half full time and then a bunch of other time because my mother got sick. So I was in and out doing stuff in oh. the city. I got... I got like USO duty for like the wow. last year of my, oh yeah, it was, they really hooked me up to this day. I have to thank them because my mother wasn't dying, but I was the only child. And some guy said, right. Hey, you know, you can get stationed in New York, go to Fort drum, go to, right. go to Fort Hamilton. And yeah. so I tried that. And because my, my MOS was, <laughs> my MOS was 13 Foxtrot. Scout? Which is fire support oh. specialist. I what is fire support specialist? I've heard that. What is fire support specialist? Okay, so all right. When I joined, I wasn't joining to like really get away from the world, but I kind of sort of was, right? I was right. I was at that point in my life, 18, 19 years old. So when the guy said fire support specialist, you know, I spoke first. And said, oh, like, is that like a fireman thing? And this fucking drill sergeant said, I mean, this uh, recruiter's like, yeah, yeah, you uh, you suppress fires <laughs> on bases. I was like, wow, okay. So, like, I, I literally signed up for that. And about a month before we were going, you have to sign more paperwork. And I'm looking, I'm like, I said to this guy, I'm like, where where's it say about the fireman stuff? <laughs> and the guy says to me, he goes, oh, boy. He goes, he did it again. I go, what did he do again? He goes, what did you think this job was? I go, I don't know, fire something or whatever. He goes, no, man, th this job is calling artillery fire to support troops that okay. are ahead of the enemy. So my job is to go a little bit ahead of the infantry and ride with the infantry right. and call Tag artillery fire to Right. You're, the you, yes. Yes. You're that guy. So, you know, I do my basic training. So, I, you know, I joined up anyway because I was going to do uh, uh, NCO and I had all sorts of plans. And so I yeah, said, all right, right, I'll get in. I'll get in this way. Let me let me go through basic because if I don't do basic now in March, uh, they said if I, you know, because uh, March in uh, Oklahoma is not so bad weather. But uh, uh, the later months are 100 and 200 degree weather. You yes, know? yes. <laughs> so, and by the way, if I'm talking too much, just interrupt and... No, 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 no. I, I never, I, all I knew about you was first cab. So I'm, and also, 
no, uh, it's a learning experience. So keep talking. I've heard fire support specialist. I just wasn't sure what that was. Gotcha. So it it definitely is a job that is is uh, the people when you go to combat, you don't live for long. You know. Uh, no, you got a radio the, on your back. Yeah. yeah, or you're with the radio guy or whatever. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they said, like in Vietnam, um, which happens to be the 45th anniversary of that of that war uh, stopping. Uh, I think it was yesterday or today, the actual oh, okay. date. So if we have any veterans that'll be listening to this later, you know, I when I when I do my like if I do a friend's podcast or a show like this, I always realize that it, it doesn't matter who is on now. No offense to whoever is on now right. live. But you know somebody's going to be watching it later. Right, right, right. So that's how I, you know, I have a bunch of friends that were a little disappointed with their numbers of podcasts and stuff and numbers. I'm like, look, oh, no, somebody I don't, I don't will watch it. No, no, I, I, that, that little number in the upper left-hand corner. This, first of all, this goes to my YouTube channel. This is just, this is the foundation. You know what I'm saying? Nothing happens overnight. You got anybody who starts a, a, a YouTube channel, a podcast or anything, if they expect overnight numbers or, or, or like success in, in three or six months, uh, it's, they're in for a long haul. But yeah, this is the beginning. This is a foundation. Uh, right. I'm not, I don't stress the numbers. I don't stress the numbers. Not yet. Uh, so, so I'm no worries there. Especially but with your funny. reputation. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm used to it. I'm used to it. I start at the bottom. E1. I'm the E. This is E1 technology for me. Okay, I'm E1 right now, and this is all good. It, this is all good. It's got to be good. If, if you know you, not only do you have like a real good positive attitude about it, but you could look at it in many different ways, right? Yeah. In a sense, like you said earlier, we'll go back to the army life later. In a sense, about our entertainment world, in a sense of things, it's kind of sort of not over, but it's a we've been set a huge blow. Like, where do we go and do our stuff? The parks? Yeah, okay. When that gets better, that's great. But I don't even feel comfortable in the parks. I didn't feel comfortable in the diner. There was people less than 10 feet away from me. They were laughing at me. They were outside. Right. I don't have it. I got tested. I've been getting tested every week because, you know, really? it takes like seven to nine days. So right. I'm like, fuck it. I'll go every like five or seven days. Nobody's saying wow. anything. I haven't gotten positive and I've been real careful, you know. I've been staying low, haven't been haven't been doing much or trying not to do much, you know. And when we go back to the comedy world, we think, you know, what are these clubs going to do? You know, let's just say realistically one of our favorite clubs. Like I'm I'm only a regular in a handful, right? Like I I I can I can get to play New York still every once in a while. I'll get to play stand up every once in a while. But you know, no no clubs that I'm in a hundred percent anymore that I could just walk in. So right. let's say even if I was, right? Let's say I like Broadway. Broadway is a favorite club of mine. They're very nice to me. They put me on a couple of times a, a, a month or a week, whatever I need. Let's say you go back to that club now. And the numbers are smaller, right? There's no more 100-person shows. There's 25-person shows. And then those 25-person shows, they're only going to put on a certain amount of comics, right? And that number is going to be limited. So whatever level you were at, even if you're an A-comic, you know, A-comics who are used to doing 5,000-seaters are now want to get on stage anywhere, they're going to come back and do a Broadway 25-person seat. This is a theory and, that has been discussed with many comedians. It's going to be a bump down. All Wherever you are, you're getting bumped. Everyone's moving down an echelon or two. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, because our, our nature is to get on fucking stage. And, and, not, and, and if he's, he's the, the arena comics, the, 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 the halls... The theater comics, if they're not, they're going to come down to the clubs and we're screwed, which is, it is what it is. Let me, let me say this about that though, because I do believe what I just said. And I do believe what you just said in agreement. Let me just look for my thing. Um, where the hell did I just put my thing? Um, so, but I do believe a lot of these guys at a certain level who've been doing it 25 30 years who have had yeah. some sort of success are not as at the bit as the lower level guys are. Mm. I think, I think some of these guys don't need to come to the clubs. And like, they don't need that. Like some of them, like 
I've seen all of them. Like when I when I ran a little club down on on uh, McDougal, I, I ran this one place called the Comedy Corner for a little bit. Yeah, and, I remember uh, started. Club. Yeah, yeah, I, I started the club for for the woman, yeah. and 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 we changed the name, and and uh, uh, Louis Louis C.K. was living in the neighborhood, and he was working on his his new his new thing. This was uh, 20, uh, whatever it was, uh, let's say 2011, 2012, 20, something like that. Right. And, and he worked out downstairs in a little shitty room for 15 people. So there are people that are going to want to do it, but there are, yeah. you'll see there's, there's that group of people out there that are like, I don't need this anymore. That craziness of right. running to I think, spots. Well, if they're fine, if they're financially set, that's one thing. If they have something else, if they already have a podcast, I think it's about the creative mind. If they have mm. something else they're doing, uh, could be a, a web series, a, a podcast, or, or I don't know, fucking flowers in the backyard. As long as there is, but if they if if there's nothing there, then I feel like they're going to be yearning because it, it's it is kind of a drug. We always said it's an addiction. We're artists. We have to paint. And the stage is our canvas. So, yeah, a lot of them are not going to need it, but they're going to need something. And they're going to be – and New York has the most comics than any other city. I just see everybody – you know, you're going to see comics where you never saw comics before. You know what I'm saying? I just yeah, – let's see what happens. You see the shows that are out there. You know, people are taking chance, doing, you know, stand-ups, doing a whole bunch of shows in places. Uh, New York Comedy Club is doing pop-up shows. The Stand tried it. Yeah. You know – Honestly, I, you know, all, all, all respect to these guys who are doing these, these drive-in shows. I had immediately had looked into it to plan something interesting as soon as this happened. In March, I immediately read into this. I was like, oh, this is going to be like this. Right, we should try right. to do outside shows. And I still have a pretty good plan of how it can be done. But I'm somewhat, again, if, if nervous is the word or apprehensive, more intense is I don't want to bring a great show together, you know, cause I, I had a couple of parking lots in Queens that I had negotiated with and it was, this was going to be like hundred car places and we could do music oh. and entertainment, you know, but then again, I was looking at my spacing and everything else. Even if I did it 50 cars or 25 cars, God forbid at one of my shows, even if you brought it in and gave it to your own kid next to you, if it was known that, oh, did you hear about that comedy show that yeah. did that? So I don't, you know, financially, you know, producing shows is one thing, but the safety, I'm one of these guys that have been really trying to look out for you. You know, yep. you, you need to be looked out. If I'm standing next to you, you, I, you need a mask. You know, I need a mask. You know, yeah. they, they said uh, people out in the world are not taking care of each other. And I truly believe that I have, we have comic friends that know other comic friends who have had this, right? We have a bunch of friends that yeah. we know together from Long Island, especially who have COVID, who had serious bouts of, of double and triple and not really good shape and in the hospital, they made it out, but they're not healthy. You know, they're telling us like, I was saying as a joke, my ex-wife is a nurse. I was like, Hey, I hope I get it. She goes, no, you don't. She goes, we're all probably get it. But if you get it, you don't know what strain of it is. You don't know if, if two months later, your spleen is going to fall out your ass. It's serious. I have a buddy of mine, um, an old friend of mine. He's a um, deputy commissioner of the EMT, uh, deputy chief. All, he's like all, deputy chief EMT. Since I know you, you're, all, you're, since I know you, you're always dropping names. <laughs> always deputy. <laughs> And his buddy, his old buddy, uh, who was an EMT paramedic, got it. Mm. And he got it I from because I read the story. It was an article. He went to the max. When he wow. got it, he got it. He was about as maxed out to before death. That's how, I mean, he got incubate everything. And <laughs> he, he beat, after like two or three months, he beat it. They sent him home. But he's... He's never going to be an EMT again. Wow. He, this is a physical guy with a physical job. He's got to learn how to walk and talk and eat. It's like everything got stopped for two or three months. His body went, you know, haywire, and now mm. he's going to be forced to retire. And that's this, and he's and he's not happy about it. 
it's yeah. so it's just so you, sad that our friends out there, our comic friends. I have a couple of comic friends that I let me just say this: friends and guys from my neighborhood for forty plus years that I know have shown their colors to me, and I'm so saddened by it. This Trumpism that people bought into him and believe in these things that he's actually saying and professing to be true. No mask. Fuck you. Why should I wear a mask? I don't have to wear a fucking mask. Yeah, bitch, you do. Let me, let me ask you something since we both serve. Correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong but when we took the oath, I do solemnly swear to protect the Constitution of the United States and so help me God. The Constitution that we swore to protect there wasn't anything about freedom of face mask, was there? It's my constitutional right, you half breed. <laughs> Fuck because, you. Because that does bother me sometimes. Look, if look, I'm cool. You want to wear it, please wear it. If you don't want to wear it, don't wear it. But stay over there. And you know what I'm saying? Don't. But don't. It's a it's who, it's a hot mess. I don't. <laughs> who's, who says you have to wear it all the time? I personally, when I go out. And I have a plan A to plan B, and then I'm going in the car. I leave my mask on, right? Yeah. But when I'm bike riding, I'll bike ride it. And if I don't see any people 20, 30, 40 feet of yards sure. ahead of me, I'll take that and get that breath. If I'm walking and I don't see anybody near me, I put it on. You know, take yeah. it off. It's, it's not know. that hard. It's not that hard. It's not that big of a deal. It's and, not that you know, are they taking our, you know, are they taking our guns away by telling us we can't put a mask on? Is it the same level of the government telling us what to do? You know, people forget something. This fucking magical thing that we're we're doing this amazing fucking we're in different countries, you and I, you know, and, and I, whatever. You're in where are you? I'm in Elmhurst. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely different country. <laughs> uh my, I'm next I, to Maspeth on the Grand Avenue side. I uh, I would normally be in Astoria where I live, but uh, now I'm in Brooklyn in uh, Park Salt area. But, you know, it, it, this magic phone, people just really, truly don't realize how much this phone is hooked up to the government and other people getting information. You know, the normal people do. Hey, you know, I get I, I, I get and And, I, you know, I, as far as uh, politics and stuff, I taught I um, I chose to take the path of George Carlin. Uh, if you're familiar with his work or how he, how he felt, he's like, he basically said, I'm a spectator. I'm just watching it all happen. He doesn't go left. He just, I'm a spectator and I'm enjoying the show. So that's pretty much what I'm, I'm trying to do. Just, I'm just watching. I'm just watching and laughing. And the whole thing with, um, like you're bringing up technology, they want to ban TikTok. They want to ban TikTok because it's made out of China and they're stealing our information. And I'm like, yeah, just like the U.S. is. Does it really matter? Does it really, does it really matter? I mean, TikTok, what do you think Facebook is doing? And Instagram and Twitter and your phone has a built-in GPS. And, you know, they can find you. You can't murder anybody like the good old days. If you have your cell phone, they're tracking you. There's cell phone towers. So what the fuck? It's like, really? Really? TikTok is you know, bad. What was that movie with the... Uh, uh, What's the girl, uh, Sarah, Sandra Bullock? Bullock, uh, the the one where she's the computer the girl. What's the low? No, no, the the she's the computer girl, uh, and she loses her whole life. Remember that was. Oh uh, no! I, didn't see that. I can't think of the thing, but like that, it was back then we knew it. Yeah. You know, the credit card traced her. You know, and then they, she made a call, and they're like, duh, 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 you know, yeah. I get, you know, I used to do a joke on stage. Oh, God, it's going back to 2004. I think in 2004, the NSA came out and said that if you made a phone call in 2003 at all in the United States to or from, we've tracked your call. And that yeah. was amazing to people. They're like, what? Oh, my God. No. And I started thinking about this. I'm like, wait a second. How many calls could that be? And it turned out to be like 7 billion. And there was no way to listen to any of those calls, you know? Did, didn't like, WikiLeaks drop that? Also, WikiLeaks? Uh, maybe that was something, uh, yeah. Maybe that was the WikiLeaks also. But th that, uh, yeah, absolutely. They, they mentioned it's that all, as well. It's all, it's, all fine. it's all there. It's, it's all, all there. there. And, and it, just, it just reminds people that, listen, man, they want you, they got you, you know? I, I, I got pissed off of uh, living with my... Uh, my ex-wife, I used to get pissed off of like having a bunch of email passwords. I'm like, 
I don't care what she sees. I, I gave yeah. her the email. Like, that's it. You know, I want to, I, I want the password, my password to be dummy one because I'll never forget that. That's one I won't forget, you know, and, and I don't care who knows because that's the thing, right? It should be like when you get your credit card robbed, like my, my PayPal got attacked for a couple of, for a couple of things and okay. they should just give it back to you, which they did. So like people shouldn't even care. Like you want to infiltrate me? Yeah, go ahead. But don't, you can't ruin my credit. You can't steal my identity completely. Like they, there should be stoppage is to, to these things, but they don't because somebody else is benefiting it from it. You know, even the company itself is, sure. is benefiting it. But it's, it, it, it all boils down to money. So yeah, they can, they can, like, I remember credit cards back in the day had the great idea of putting your picture on the credit card to, to prevent theft because now, you know, they don't have to check for ID. They just look at your picture. Oh, it's you. There it is. It's you. I'm like, wow, what a great idea. So what happened? What happened? How come they, how come they took it back? What happened? Because there's people benefiting from credit card fraud. So you can't clean it up. It's like cleaning up. What, what would happen to the cops if there was no crime? What would happen to the sanitation department if, if we were completely clean? Which, by the way, I litter from time to time to keep them working. Not <laughs> much, but just enough. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, same thing. It's like you said. So, yeah, it all, it's all money-based. You can't clean it up. It's, it's you, technology. I, I appreciate what you're saying about the non-politics thing. But, you know, as a guy, I, I grew up as a, a single, uh, no, no brother and sister, no father, and just my mother and I. And my mother was a very powerful woman. You know, she was 5'10", solid, 180 pounds, very tough woman, but very elegant at times. But when she wanted to tell you you fucked up, she would tell you, you know, backhand and or with her mouth. And she got me into politics. She was a woman that was running around like with Bella Osbug, who was a very famous councilwoman in the, in the 70s. And she ran for Senate and office. And I got to be around these people and I got to hear what the, I realize in a sense, all of politics is bullshit. Yeah. It really is. It's like somebody saying one point, the other point is this yeah. and that. And then whoever gets hired for those four years, we hope to God it's working out. You know, I personally with this guy, I just wish, you know, I, I, I another quick joke I did was, which was, I didn't, he didn't even realize he was going to win. You know, he had yeah, no I, idea he was going to win. I, yeah, you know, I know. The, he, he, he was just doing it. The, I thought it was purposely stunned. That's it. He was doing it. Play, you know, the Illuminati had no idea he was going to win, you know, because if he did, the, this guy would have been executed already. You know, they had no <laughs> idea it was going to be such a thing. Yeah. But even now, even now, I wish he would pull an LBJ uh, and, and just decide not to run. Don't accept the party's nomination. Let them find anybody else, anybody else, because this guy it's going to be a lame duck thing for the second year and all that. Yeah. And I just, I guess we all need a break. You know, it also is kind of sad to see a bunch of our friends, people who still love the flag, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Co confederate, flag, confederate flag and still believe that certain people, like I'm not a black lives matter guy in the sense of, I believe everything they're doing is right. I believe those words, Black Lives Matter, it's a very specific thing. Yeah. It's not even all it's not even all black folks, because it, it's a specific group of people who have had these interactions with the police. Yeah. So it, it, it it's and, and I know some of my friends are gonna say, Well, what do you mean? How do you decide who's what a level? And I think people understand kind of sort of what I mean. I, I know friends who wear suit and ties who are black dudes that are getting pulled over. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. A cop is, but with these things, with the black lives matter and, and, and understanding of the cops, you can't defund the cops. You have to refund and, 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 I, and, and, and teach them different things. I teach hate them that how, term. I hate that one? term defund the police. I feel like it's an intentional term they put out there to stir the pot on both fucking sides because there it, it does it has no meaning there's no substance it's like here you make something out of it and everyone flip the fuck out defund what does that mean there's no there's there's nothing there just leave it up to the people's imaginations here left run with this here right run with this 
defund the police. No, it, it, it's not. A, it shouldn't be defund. It should be okay. Uh, take a step back, recalculate, reorganize, re 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 restock, re you know, just fix, uh, readjust. You know, it, that's what it is. It should be readjusting, reeducating, uh, not defunding. Uh, maybe a few refunds, what, whatever. But it's not this whole blanket defund the police. That's a crock of shit. And and what happened was the the government the 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 de Blasio, you know they had these numbers planned for cuts if you would, be even before all this shit was happening. So for mm. them to take away a billion dollars, it does take stuff away from the cops, like a bunch of overtime. There's like a lot yeah. of things, and also yeah. the ability to do things like you know maybe. A cop won't go that extra mile, possibly, because he knows if he does, he's not going to. There could be different. But what, what de Blasio did with that number is, like you just said, that number is make-believe. That number is not really taken away completely. It's going to be used, PAL, here and there. It's not like it disappeared. Now, when people say defund, I want the cops to be trained more. I want yes. a guy to be able yes. to put me in a chokehold without killing me. You know, yes. I, you know, you can't use Eric Gardner as the example. If anything, no. there's the other kid who, uh, what's the black kid's name? He got detective grabbed him in the Bronx. Damn. I'm sorry to the him. Puerto Rican kid, the Puerto Rican. Yeah. Kid. What's his name? Uh, no, no, I forgot his name, oh, but he was oh. a Puerto Rican kid, the Puerto Rican kid who died. Actually. The, the, yes. I remember the story and I was puzzled because when, after Eric Garner, they were saying that, oh, the chokehold is illegal now. I thought they made it illegal back then. It was already illegal. Well, they, Here, they made it illegal again? Here's what it is, and I don't know this for fact, but, but just because you're reminding me of the story, Yeah. our second story is supposedly a chokehold with the baton. He oh, choked oh, so him with the baton. So oh, okay. I think no chokeholds with the baton went to now no gotcha. chokeholds yeah, okay. to the head. But my understanding of this, because I've taken a little martial arts, and especially the last couple of years, because when you get a little older, older, you have to learn how to do certain things different when you were, you know? I yeah, can still yeah. probably, if I'm, if I'm attacked or something, there's, God willing, I still have the right, the right to knock somebody out one shot. But if not, yeah. if I'm rolling on the floor with somebody, I want to be able to tangle this fucker up, break an right. arm, choke him right. out. Cops right. should be able to do that. Cops should be able to choke out me, God forbid one of my kids who is having a psychotic episode without killing them, without them, anybody getting hurt. You know, like you see so many things of cops, the poor guy who got shot at the Wendy's, you know, two cops had no idea how to control that guy. You know, they had no yeah. plan. Like they st stumbling <laughs> over each other. And, you know, God forbid that guy was trained, right? God forbid. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I his, sound like a... No, no, I, I totally agree. Here's the thing about it. There's no structure. There's not, there's not, not only not enough training, not the right training. And I always go back to the military and somebody made a good point. It was a veteran who was overseas in Iraq made a good point. How the hell does an 18 year old kid with a rifle in a country where he's hated and he's surrounded by armed people, how does he have enough control and discipline and uh, follow orders? Don't fire unless fired upon. How does an 18 year old kid have more discipline than a police officer here in New York? That's number one. And number two, I mean, I, again, I don't hate the cops. I want, I just, I want them to receive the proper training. I want them to kick ass accordingly. But uh, example, uh, if you go to Asian countries and even some European ones, those cops, they're hand to hand qualified. I think in Japan, they have to take six months. They're 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 a perp, they're brown belt minimum. I think in Japan and some Asian countries, they're brown belt minimum. So there is no fear. Uh, so because they they they're confident in their training, and I think that's the problem with police officers. Um, let me let me add to this because you know sometimes I, sometimes I think like you did when you just mentioned about George Carlin. I I honestly think the same thing, and when I think about my mother and and the 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 rallies I've been to and the protests I've been to, sometimes you just feel it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah. Who's listening? You know, yeah. like in, in 2004, I was, you know, I, besides the million jobs I'll, I'll talk about as we go through this podcast, one of the jobs was I, uh, I have to drive back to this other area. One of the jobs is I was a photojournalist. 
you know, an actual press photographer. If you go to I, spot, I saw your videos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You saw this, right. Right. I sent yeah, you yeah. stuff. If you, if you go to spotnewsvideo.com, you'll, you'll see my, my work. And, um, if we kick out for a minute, I'll, I'll be back in less than three or four minutes. If we gotcha. do, I just got to go back to this other area, but the, uh, you know, to, to see like in 2004, the protests are the ones that are now, you know, they're all the same. They're all people just dissatisfied with the system both sides of the system the the craziness like when you look at our lives now you and i and all of our friends and family and we and and we sat down and we showed a movie of 1968 be watching the same thing i could be showing oh, you the shit. same thing war people in the streets yelling racial you know cops versus blacks blacks versus everybody you know a a a, 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 a uh, actual election a presidential election happening all in this same freaking year out of any and, and on top of it all the COVID, which has never been seen ever in this in this world it's like a triple shit quadruple shit sandwich from every direction it is you went you went to mexico and not only did you drink the water but you <laughs> you drank you drank the oh i don't even want to get too nasty it's it's, it's a family no, you show. drank the water then you slept and ate out a 50 year old whore that's what you you just need. And, and, go and, ahead, go ahead. And, and, and Waddle, then Waddle, you, Waddle, excuse me, excuse me. First of all, we have to say, oh, hello there. We have a fan out there today. We have a uh, uh, beatnik nook nick. Uh, Jordan Ferber is a, a guest. Hello there, and hello to our other guest, Coach, Coach Frank. Frank. Cool. So uh, the uh, the uh, also the uh, uh, the old lady. Uh, while she you're eating her out, why is she shitting? And then you went to Taco Bell drive through on the way home <laughs> so yeah it's that's that's how much shit is happening right now that's why i'm like you know what uh thank god i i have therapy and i go to anger management classes because it's really helping me a lot uh even Are my you, wife says it, i'm too calm is that true you've been going on therapy online uh no no the va the va oh hold on lost you lost you lost you hold on hold on are there Taco Bells in Mexico? Hilarious. Uh, somebody picked that up. I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. That's funny. Are there Taco Bells? You know what? I wouldn't be fucking so. I bet you there is. It's got to be near the tourists. There's got to be a Taco because it's comfort food for fucking Americans who don't know any better. Uh, an American would be stupid enough to go to a Taco Bell in Mexico. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say it would probably be near. There would have to be a Taco Bell, but it'd be like a, a touristy location or somewhere like Puerto Vallada or some shit. PJ, you there? I lost you for a sec. I'm there. Can you hear me or not? All right, PJ. PJ's driving. You there? You there? I'm there. I'm trying to uh, get to a spot where I can uh, get clear again. All right. I got you. I got your audio, so that's good. Don't worry about that. Keep me on the audio at least. Hold on a sec. Let me just... Uh... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do your thing. Do your thing. Look at you on the move in Brooklyn. What is that beat Nick? Yes, beat Nick. No, because I've seen it. Because, like, like why? Like, because I drive Uber in the city, beat Nick. And here's the thing: you're you're visiting. You're a tourist visiting New York City, the most diverse city in the country, with every possible type of food that you can ever imagine is here, fresh. And what do what do people do? They go to Olive Garden in Times Square. Okay, because that's I, I, I'm some Americans, not all Americans, but that, they just need their comfort food. And that's why there's an Olive Garden in Times Square and a Red Lobster. And when I ever, whenever I drive people, I, I plead with them, please don't fucking go to what you already know. I said, we got a Chinatown. We got a little Italy. We got a little Korea. We got a little Brazil. We got a little India. And if you go into the boroughs, you get the Dominicans, you got the Puerto Ricans, and then you got the Colombians. Forget about it. Uh, but some people, uh, that's why they call it comfort food because they feel safe and they're, and they're afraid to explore and try different things. But, hey, that's just them. Me, I like it all. I'm waiting to have some bear and snake one day. I haven't found a place that serves that, but uh, hopefully one day. There's, a little le there's, there's less of Little Italy than there used to be. Yeah, I know. I know. It, it's like. I know there's a lot of property going down. Like even Chinatown, I feel like they're losing. It's all this new, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, new New York, hipsters, uh, call it what you will. But yes, a little Italy is smaller 
And I think Chinatown is getting smaller. Soho kind of blew up. Soho, you know, all the, all the fancy schmancy stores and shit. You've had Snake, I think, in Texas. Oh, shit. Yo, PJ, just jump back on. Hit the two smiley faces. Hit the two smiley. Yeah, you go, PJ. There we go. I, the, only, the craziest thing I've had is crocodile, alligator tail in Texas, as a matter of fact. Someone took me a fair, and it was allig fry, dip, deep fried alligator tail. So shout out, shout out to Beat Nook Wet Snake. You're good. Oh, shit. There you go. There you go, PJ. Well, I came back to a Southern cooking show. What the hell happened? From a Puerto Rican? We were just talking food while you were away, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you have my friend Jordan on with the food? He's a, be, he's be, a food be, connoisseur. Be, be, beat Nick. Beat Nick. Yes, Beat Nick is a, is a famous Jordan Ferber. He's got a great podcast called uh, Where's the Grief? Have you heard? Have you been on? Have you heard about it? That's Jordan Ferber? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, I know. See, that's, that's the only thing I hate about Instagram because everyone puts up their cute little namesy wamesies and I can't read, I can't see the face. Oh, I'm like, yeah, I know who Jordan is. Okay, what's up, man? I thought you were a civilian. My bad. My apologies, man. That's you. I'm looking, but my, you know, I can't see. All I see is a little circle with a couple of faces. <laughs> you, got, and you got that lazy eye as it is, so you can't see straight. Yeah, something like that. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Are you? How are you doing, Jordan? Yeah, you should, all right? Yeah, I'm good right now. I just, I have the phone at the, the locked in the thing. And uh, all right. I'm just, I'm trying to get you some... Uh, you know, try to get a better thing. But, yeah, you should have uh, Jordan on the show. He's an interesting dude in that podcast. It's Where's the Grief? He talks to to comics who have had uh, loved ones pass. Oh, get, what, what's it called again? I, 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 where's the what? It's called Where's where, the Grief. Where, where, where's the Grief? And uh, he'll probably post. Wow. More yeah. It's, 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 and when I say it's great, it's, it's just it's a very loving and, and interesting podcast to, to hear other comments who have gone through something that we've all gone through, and you might think you're out there by yourself, but you're actually, the, you know, you're not alone when you go through grief, and everybody has different parts and different aspects of their own grief, and it's not defined at all, you know, which, which he, he tells much better than I do, and it's just a wonderful podcast to listen to. Wow. You should tell your viewers. Well, now, now I'm thinking, I mean, I, I, I've been pretty lucky. I had only one, I mean, aside from one family member that, uh, well, now you make me think. Uh, yeah, well, I don't want to get into it now, but yeah, I mean, I lost my best friend years ago. Uh, so yeah, and I you still, see, and, wow, this was a long time ago. Well, let me, let me just say that because I'm just reading the notes. It's, it's you know, uh, <laughs> he uh, he also interviews different people. It's not just comedians. It's just very interesting people who have had had loss. But with what you just said, that's what happens sometimes. Like what I just did, and I hope it doesn't trigger you completely. But you just said that you maybe not even have thought of that person in a long time, and now you know you talk to Jordan. You start thinking about this friend who you lost and how you lost. It just becomes an interesting talk, you know, and especially now that you're in therapy at the VA. Yeah. Um, how, how, going back to your little story, how long uh, were you in the military? Uh, well, and I, I know your view, and I know your viewers know. I'm just trying to. You give me a quick, quick thing. Oh no. Uh, well, I joined in '93. Um, funny story about your recruiter. Um, I, I must have been. I was like the. Uh, my recruiter must have got an erection when I walked in. Because I went in there, like you, seeing a lot of movies. I thought I knew what I wanted. And I told him, infantry. And he just smiled and said, yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so what happened was um, I knew I wanted to join. I knew I wanted to be tough. Or I, wanted to t I wanted a challenge. And I actually stepped into the Marines first. But the Marines told me that it's a four-year minimum. Now, I, wrote, I, was, I was about 19 to going on 20, and I had a bunch of friends in the military, so I did a poll. And by the poll came out 50-50. Half of them said, oh, no problem, and half of them said, I can't wait to get the fuck out. So when the Marines said four years, I'm like, I, what if I don't like it? That's a long time. So that's when I went to the Army, and I said, infantry, you got it for two years. And like, yeah, we can give you infantry for two. No problem. So I was like, yo, let's do it. Rock and roll. And so right. we did. Where I got screwed 
was, you see, I follow the movie. So that's the infantry I had in mind. What, what movie I, uh, did you watch? Uh, 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 Platoon, of course. Full Metal Jacket, top two. That, that, was, that was my era, Full Metal Jacket and Platoon. So that was the infantry I had in mind. What I didn't know what this, was that the infantry was divided into different uh, parts of the, of, of the infantry combat system. Right, uh, arm, armored, armored, and so I get the I get the Fort Benning, and they're like, "Okay, Ooh, you're, you're you're walking." They go, "You're eleven, Mike," and I'm like, "What's eleven, Mike?" Ooh. Mechanized infantry. I'm like, "What's mechanized infantry?" You ride in the back of a. What's a Bradley? I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and and I, it turned out I was mechanized infantry, and I was like, "Oh, fuck." And, and I had no clue. And the funny thing is, after I signed my papers with the recruiter, I remembered late, holy shit, I want to jump out of an airplane. I want to go airborne. So the recruiter's like, don't worry about it. When you get to your duty station, just request. So I get to my duty station, Fort Hood, first cab, and I'm like, yo, can I go airborne? It's like, yo, as long as that Bradley fighting vehicle doesn't jump out of a plane, neither do you. There's your answer. I'm like, oh, fuck. So... I was mechanized infantry for two years, and then I re-enlisted for two more in Fort Hood. So I did four years in Fort Hood, and then I came home. Wow! And then I came home and National Guard and did the infantry I wanted. I uh, they because I said I want to go to reserves National Guard. He goes, "You want mechanized?" I'm like, "No, I want regular infantry, <laughs> straight leg." She goes, "No problem. We have a unit in Queens, in Jamaica." So I was like, "Wow, Queens, that's me." Boom. So I did eight years, uh, four first calf mechanized infantry, and four National Guard, uh, first of the 105th uh, infantry out of Jamaica. Yeah. Armor. Yeah. So eight years. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, I'm here. Guys, eight years. Okay. Yeah. yeah four yeah, that's four. Uh, I had gotten lucky and did some rappelling right before I went in. And I figured I could do air assault. Yeah. And they said the same thing to me. When you get to your post, and uh, I I applied, and we were going to reforger, and the guy said, yeah, maybe in the spring you could go. And then, you know, it was it's, all it's, it's all crap. But It's a hard lesson, it, and we, we learned the lesson in basic once you got to your platoon with the drill sergeants and everything because now we're talking amongst each other. And everyone, it's it's it was it was hilarious. You got forty guys in a platoon, basic training. We're all talking to each other, and they're like, "Yo, I'm an E3. How'd you get E3? Yo, I'm an E4. How'd you get E4? Yo, I know where I'm going. I'm going to Kansas. How the fuck do you know where you're going already? Like, I got a bonus. I didn't get a bonus. I, I got this, and everybody's going nuts. I'm like, what the fuck? It depends, yo. It depends on the recruiter. It depends on luck, and, and with the most valuable Everything. lesson, if it's not in the contract, it's not guaranteed. Exactly, man. Who knew at that point, everything that you just said, you see, these are the type of things we want to help people, you know, by teaching them this, you know, that should be taught this, they should be, as my Joe Sarger would say, they should be learned this and, and, and understand that make a little deal from themselves because there's most of yeah. these kids are doing it too to get out of the neighborhood. The 17 year old yeah. guy, guy in, in Andalusia, Alabama, if he doesn't do these three years and get enough money for college, he's going to be working in the factory somewhere, which is probably not even existent right now. Yeah. My, my story similar to you again is, you know, I went into the army, like I said, in 87. So in 86, platoon came out i went to see platoon and i love platoon and i i love the music the era the whole thing and and i was watching it and then when i did my basic training in ait and i come out of it i went to see platoon again and i understood every single thing that these guys yeah. were saying and and like we talked earlier yeah. my my by the time i would call like in the movie by the time i called for fire 13 seconds <laughs> later i would be dead <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm the yeah. guy. If, if anybody's a big fan of the movie Platoon, I'm the guy when the when the when the colonel goes, just I'm going to light smoke. Just to where the smoke is. I'm the guy in the movie going, they're all over us. Yeah, yeah. We're, I'm surrounded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's you. That's you. That's, that's me. You. That's me. You know that. Yeah. But again, you know the the same thing with these recruiters. You know they. I wish we could tell these kids, but. 
You know, the military now, I would not want yeah. either of my children to be in the fighting part of the military. Uh, yeah, okay? I, if, I, uh, if I had a choice, both of them, you know, they're both computer, uh, very computer literate. So I would rather both of them be behind the scenes. You know, do I want them, you know, yep. I hate to Just, say it like this. Do I want them in, 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 in Vegas controlling a drone, killing people in Afghanistan? Yeah. No, I don't want that on them either because I don't know if you going back to my journalism and my documentaries, I don't know if you saw the other one about the, uh, the nine 11 that I sent you, but I I've met a lot of people that have gone to combat Yeah, and none of them, you know, I say to them, Oh, well, I, I've said this foolishly, foolishly in the past. So I'll say it as foolishly as I did back then, not as I know it now, but just so you can have the understanding, yeah. I would say to these guys who have actually seen combat, Oh, I didn't get to go. I wish I would have gone. And I get the same thing from every one of them. No, you don't. You don't want that. I kind of feel like go. that too. I have, I have, that's how I felt. That's how I still feel in a way. I know well, it's stupid. I, I, I agree. It's stupid. But in a way, it, it's a mind fuck to train for this shit. And here's the thing with me. I got out in the spring of 01. I got out in the spring mm, of 01. Wow. So I was still fresh. A couple of months later, the shit hits the fan. I'm st and I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking, and I could. I know I could have went back, but I mean, I had my kids were, and I was in a separation at the time, so it was just a, a father decision. Other than that, I would have went. But it's always, it, it mm, you know, for the, for the several, and it still does to be watching your job on TV and you're home on the couch. So I know what you're saying. I feel it. And let let me let me just add to this so you understand. When I got out, I got out in like uh, uh, like eight, middle of 88, 89 in the sense of not having to go. And the war comes. Right. And every one of my friends in Fort Hood, because that was the unit that went to I Iraq. Yeah. They went Fort Hood to Iraq. That's yeah. what, And most of my friends went there. And I was getting messages from people. So when you talk about tweaking and all these other things, yeah. I get it. You know, when you yeah. get trained for it, you think you're going to be invincible. Like, I, I was training with guys. And here's another example going back to what you were saying. The first day we, we, we got to basic training, there was like eight of us because the rest of the people hadn't gotten there yet. So for like two or three days, there was only eight people. So we were getting up at like eight o'clock. We were taking showers. We were filling out paperwork. It was real, very casual. And then like the next morning, we had 50 people in and things changed. You know, yeah. I, I remember saying, good morning. Good morning, Drill Sergeant. And, uh, good morning, Reg. How you doing? The <laughs> next day, I was like, good morning, Drill Sergeant. And he gave me the fucking, don't you ever fucking. I was like, I, I became, a mo I became effem effeminate. I was like, Oh my God, what happened? I thought we had something. <laughs> but when, you know, when, 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 when these guys, when you, when you go out of, uh, when you go out of training. So now uh, I knew all of these guys, all of my friends were going from Fort Hood to combat and, yeah. and shit was actually happening. But again, I literally have, have, I talked to a bunch of guys from the fighting 69th during, during the, the, uh, those years, I had interviewed guys at yeah. the um, at the um, armory on um, Long Island. Um, you know, no, no, the Fighting 69th is in Manhattan. It's the, one of the most famous oh, Lexington, units. Lexington on Lexington, Lexington Avenue. Yeah, absolutely right. Co copy on that, and and it's a famous unit. And it turns out that two of my mother's uncles, because uh, she didn't have any uh, brothers and sisters, so it's like step uncle or great uncle to me. Two of them were stationed at. The, uh, at the armory during World War II. Wow. Uh, for me. So I had a lot. So I, I, I hung out with these guys and I actually got approved to be embedded with them. I got approved after six months of, of doing this to be embedded with them in Iraq because they were doing a security post. Wow. And a month. Yeah, man, it took, a, it was unbelievable. I was getting in mentally, physically. I had done retraining. I was working with a couple of guys who were uh, drill sergeants and they would put me through the routine so I could be yeah. physically and mentally ready right, right. To, to do the combat and film, you know, uh, which would have been my only thing. And uh, about a month or so before, I don't know if you'll recall this, the Fighting 69th fired upon a Jeep that was coming to their post. 
they fired upon this Jeep and killed everybody in the Jeep. And the Jeep turned out to be a photojournalist who had been kidnapped and released. And then a couple of Italian guys who got, who, who were there and they killed everybody. So they stopped all of the, all of the things, yeah. all of the uh, embeds. But wow. I got to be with them during their family times. And I got to know these people and over upon over, over and over guys and a couple of chicks would say to me, you know, it was the worst thing. You know, I know I'm going to have memories forever. You know, I have a couple of guys that, you know, allow me to put this on camera. And I said to them, well, tell me, just tell me about it. And I have the stories that I'm sure that you have heard. And, 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 you know, it's important to listen to veterans. If you're a veteran, there's a thing like you and I might be like, oh, we're not going to understand because we're not combat veterans. No bullshit. Yeah, no. We can help another yeah. veteran. If, yeah. a, if a vet... You know, I see guys getting hurt, you know, hurting themselves because yeah. they have nobody to talk to, you know, and guys like you and I, even though we didn't serve, we can help a vet. We've gone through basic training. We've gone through the military understanding PJ, of things. PJ. Yeah. I want you, this is going to cut off. Okay. You got uh, it, buddy. No, I'm going to no, cut off and, and jump oh. back. I'm going to cut you off and then jump back on in two